Hey guys, Chris here with Cable Bullet. Today I'm going to show you just how easy it is to upgrade your wood railing using Cable Bullet Cable Rail Kits. I'll walk you through the basic steps of installing and tensioning your cable runs, which will give you a good idea of just how simple and clean this system really is. Adding cables to new or existing wood railing is incredibly popular for a number of reasons. First and foremost, it's a huge improvement to your view. It also costs less per foot compared to an all metal system, and it's significantly less maintenance than wood pickets. Lastly, and this is where the design and functionality of our cable bullet system really makes a big difference, it's a very DIY friendly project that we believe anyone can tackle. Before we get started with the installation, let's take a closer look at the components that make up every cable bullet kit. The tensioner is the core piece that anchors the cable to your post. The crimp captures the lobed washer, which provides resistance for the set screw. Advancing the set screw against the lobed washer drives the assembly into the post, tensioning the line. Once installed, all tensioning happens on the inside of the post. So all you'll see at the end is this quarter inch head. The end result is a nice, clean, finished look, especially compared to more traditional turnbuckle systems that have a lot of externally visible hardware, which can look bulky and industrial on shorter runs. Each tensioner has approximately three quarters of an inch adjustment, so one and a half inches across both ends. Properly installed, you should have the ability to tension your cables to about 150 pounds of tension over a 20 foot span. Limiting your run to 20 feet helps ensure a nice tight line that's going to look great and minimize the risk of failing inspection. Unlike many other cable rail systems, you'll notice cable bullet kits don't have tensioning and non-tensioning ends or separate kits for level and angled runs. And because they don't fasten through the post, you won't need to stagger your runs around single corner post configurations. Each cable will use one kit on each end. While every cable bullet kit uses the same universal tensioning mechanism, we do have options for anchoring to wood through sleeves and veneers, into metal or masonry posts and columns. All cable bullet kit components are made from type 316 stainless steel, which means they're highly corrosion resistant and designed for both indoor and outdoor applications. The coarse threading is optimized for use in both soft and hardwood posts, so you won't have any issues using these in pine, redwood, or cedar, as well as any hardwood species. For this demonstration, I'll be installing our standard one and a half inch long tensioner in a pressure treated pine 4x4. If your posts have a veneer of any kind, an additional wrap, or if you're anchoring to a stud through sheetrock, we do have an XL and XXL version of this tensioner available. So here we have a pre-built frame. You can see we have a 4x4 pressure treated pine post here and on this side we have hardwood oak. Um, the only difference between installing the tensioner in softwood and hardwood is that with the hardwood you're going to need to use a tap after you've drilled your holes and we have a whole separate video explaining that process. So you can see we've already marked the center point for our cables. And these cables are three inches uh, spaced and the next step is going to be we're going to take a Forstner bit, 5 8 inch, and we're going to just kiss the surface. That's not necessary, but it does really help minimize the likelihood of splintering, and we do recommend it, especially if your posts are uh, already finished and you're worried about kind of cracking and breaking apart that surface. After we've kissed the surface here with our 5 8 we're going to take a 9 16 brad point bit and drill our holes to one and a half inch depth. A quick way to gauge the right depth for your hole is to put a piece of painter's tape on your drill bit that marks that one and a half inches. Next, once we've drilled our holes, we have a bullet driver. This is a custom piece that we've made to fit exactly in the keyhole opening of every cable bullet tensioner. We're gonna chuck that into our drill and then use this to drive the bullet into the post.
If you want all of these keyholes to be lined up in the same direction, you can either use the drill to do that or you can grab a socket wrench and uh, you're gonna use a 7 16 head on that. As we mentioned before, you're gonna use the same tensioner on both ends of your cable. So we're gonna repeat the process that we just went through on the other end and pick up there. Now that we have cable bullet tensioners installed on both ends, we're gonna take this pre-cut piece of cable and prep it by putting a lobed washer and crimp on the first end. Here I have our manual hydraulic 16 ton crimper. That's gonna give us the necessary force we need to crimp the stainless steel uh, ferrule. It's got a hexagonal die in it, so we only need to crimp it once the full length of the sleeve. First, we're gonna put the lobed washer on. And we're gonna slide the crimp over the end. Open up the crimp. Go ahead and advance that until we make contact. And give it one or two additional pumps just to make sure we're seated nicely. Open that up and you can see we have a nice long hexagonal crimp that has a solid indent, which means that's gonna hold great. Now that we have our first cable end finished, we're gonna slide that into the keyhole opening of the cable bullet. We're gonna use the set screw and this 3 seconds inch Allen wrench. We're just gonna go ahead and set that and advance it so that the set screw is flush with the face of the bullet. It's gonna lock that in place. And now we're gonna move on to the other end. With your first end securely set, you're gonna take that rough cut of cable, pull it to the opposing end, and you're gonna to wanna to make that finish cut about an inch past the face of the bullet. So three quarters of an inch in from the edge of the post. You can either use masking tape to mark your three quarter inch uh, that way, or you can take the cable uh, crimp and lobed washer and line it up about so, and know that you need to make your cut right there. Now that we know where we wanna make our finish cut, we're gonna use a pair of high quality cable cutters this is seven by seven stainless steel wire. It's 5 seconds inch thick. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that your cable cutters are high quality and rated for cutting this thickness and material. All right, now that we have our finished cut made, we're gonna repeat the process of crimping this cable end. All right, with this cable end crimped, we're just going to slide that into the second cable bullet. Use our second set screw to lock this end in place. There we go. You shouldn't have too much slop in this line. A little bit is all right, but you're gonna to wanna to make nice, accurate cuts so that the tensioning mechanism itself has to do the least amount of work to get that nice, taut cable. To do that, we're gonna use the 3 seconds. This is a six inch long hex driver, and we're gonna go ahead and advance the set screw on both ends now to tension this wire. And then as that set screw drives deeper into the post, the line will tighten right up. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions at all, or you would like a free sample kit, don't hesitate to contact us.